The uh, trip to the grocery store is already traumatic. So yeah, you know, every basic <laughs> conversation with me. <laughs> so Jack, you you mentioned uh, one of the one of those hit home, right? And it was about the mother. What do you make of that? She, she was very attractive. She was a very attractive young lady, but that was a very oddly specific. <laughs> that was an oddly specific ick. Do you think that's based on? I just have this ick because I have this. <laughs> You all right, bro? Yeah, go ahead. I wonder where this is going. No, I'm but thinking of thing, dark jokes already. Okay, well, the the thing is, like, okay, if he has mom, mom, mommy issues, and I'm like, okay, it makes sense. And the guy asks, well, what if he doesn't have a mom? Which is something out of his control. And she's like, even worse. Do you think that a lot of these eggs have to do with past boyfriends that didn't work out? Yes. And they're just trying to backwards rationalize why it didn't work out with something as... Yeah. unfair as like hey your mother is no longer around That's I, I, I think it's the lack of masculine um capability that could have saved the mom because you see if you were a real alpha male <laughs> your mom would still be alive you could have saved her you could have prevented anything from happening you could have covered the medical bills at five years old or however old you were or your mom passed away you could have beaten the illness she had and you know what that woman is absolutely right if your mom is dead you ain't no man Man, that's so true. Jack really <laughs> nailed it. A lack of dominant masculine presence in their life. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, I get think book, guys. get the book. <laughs> <laughs> no, in all honesty, I don't I don't fucking know. It's like maybe she had an ex who uh maybe he went just went through it. I mean, we've heard those stories of guys who were in a relationship or married and they went through uh family issues or health issues and she just packed up and left she just packed up and left so that could be it to like um um how do I, what's the word i'm looking for where she rationalizes it for herself where it's like yeah it just became unattractive because he became emotional about it or whatever meanwhile like of course like if those things happen a guy gets hit by it or there was a guy who hadn't processed it and he trauma dumped on her. And now she's kind of like, yeah, you know what? Let's just go for, uh, let's just go for the guy who uh, has uh, his family in order. Do you think it's because it's a guy, she dated a guy that deferred to his mother before her? That could be a thing. Like, hey, we're doing this. I'm like, my mom wouldn't like me doing that because she trusts his mom more than my, does. My mom told me that's the wrong hole. You don't do it there. <laughs> I have uh, another thing, uh, Thor. I got a question for you. Another, it was the astrology. Like he didn't believe <clears throat> astrology. Do you think that it was because there was this guy who didn't just play along with her little astrology yeah. and use game to, to, you know, just play along and be like, you know, use it the what do you call it the, the astrology stuff? And he would constantly say that's stupid, that's dumb instead of playing along and all that stuff. Do you think a lot of times that is a hey, you have you lack game, you didn't. I want you to just get it. I don't want you to explain reality to me. You think yeah. Oh, you just cracked open. You just cracked <laughs> open a can to a whole topic unto <laughs> yeah. itself because you're absolutely right. What What's going on, in my opinion, there is that the astrology thing for women is a way to communicate emotionally, just feelings, not really actions or any empirical data. And so when you discount, it's like you're discounting their personality. So that does tend to be a real ew, ick thing if you do enough of it. You don't have to do that for them to know that you don't buy into any of that bullshit. And you're just, in fact, amuse mastery is the best way to handle it. And that's a non-issue and it doesn't become so icky. But man, we could do a whole episode on that yep. based on the astrology is an emotional way for these gals to communicate with each other and the world, which seems absolutely bizarre to us because it doesn't loop around with logical thinking is very lateral and circular. And I, I think I like for us. the feeling they get from the idea of this mystery, it's mysterious. And, yes. And you don't know there's other forces out there that, that yeah. control you. The world they, happens. They always, they always need yeah. an out. They can't take responsibility. And here's so the thing. There is like, oh, well, this yeah. is why I did the thing that was horrible. And, and the thing is, there's a grain of truth in that. We don't know everything. And you could use this tool to a huge yeah. advantage. I've written about it. It's just, it's, just to keep it there and not discount it will buy you so much. But yeah, I mean, nuke. I mean, that's a hell of an insight because that is one of those things that's a big ick is anything that dissuades their emotional responses comes off as an ick. Yeah, to, to yeah. like, uh, what do you call it? Um, 
dismiss <laughs> dismiss it just like she probably dated a guy that dismissed her emotions and then when he was gaming her he said you believe in that show just that's stupid right it's just like that's not the time you know, no, probably you know it's it. For it. yeah well, that's not shorter studies and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah there's no correlation you know and it's just like dude you're on a date with a girl you're not you're not on a date with you're 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 on a date with a woman right just yeah. go have fun it's just, Go along. It actually violates. It actually violates rules. I I started looking at it like this, right? So I got two my two sons. They have Pokemon. They like the Pokemons, right? It's like if my kid or your his kid, your your friend's kid, somebody came over to you and they're like showing you the Pokemon cards and you're telling you all about the Pokemon card and this Pokemon does this thing and it attacks him and he wins, whatever. And uh, you're you're sitting there to the kid. You're sitting there with a five or six year old and be like, hey, look. These aren't real monsters. <laughs> they yeah. don't exist. He can't really shoot a fireball from his tail. That's not real. And you and you just spend an hour trying to explain to this five or six year old. And he's gonna hate you at the end of it. Yeah. Why? Why the pokey mans that he likes so much and loves and wants to share with you aren't real? And he's, you're kind of dumb, kid, for liking it. Yeah. yeah. So you to, really, you have to look at it like that. Because I used to, when I was back in the day, I used to like, I would get mad and be like, it's so stupid. There's no correlation. There's no evidence. Like, there's zero studies that show any evidence that any of this is real on any level. And there's a buttload of stuff showing that it's fake. So, this so is that, that is that's true. true. That's true. And it's true. But like, being true doesn't, didn't help. No, it, it doesn't help you. It violates rule zero, which is being useful. If you think about it, you know, you're you're expressing these opinions and realities that she has not bought into because of her emotions. It makes her feel good. A real simple thing is to say less and she'll assume that you understand. Or and now or you're miles ahead. Yeah. Use it to your advantage. You know, like use it. You use it to mess with her, like tease her. Yeah. Oh, you're an yeah. Aquarius. Or one, one thing I do to tease women about the astrology stuff is that I ask them what they are. And when they say something weird or silly, I'd be like. Yeah, that's what an Aquarius would say. Yeah, and they, love, and, they, and they eat it up, and it's just like, do you want to be right or do you want to win? Choose. There's your amuse master right there. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. So, yeah. so just for John, this is a Charizard, and it can actually shoot fireballs. Just, just <laughs> you get clear. educated, sir. Yeah, so, you get educated. As so, John, <laughs> so John, there was a couple of icks about women. Uh, sorry, women, men not being like uh, strong enough, or them falling, or them not having coordination. Like one of the girls said, when a guy just falls for no reason, right? And I can see it in a way that like guys that ha don't have coordination aren't athletic or anything mm -hmm. like that. And you, yeah. you mentioned that uh, UFC chick who who dumped her boyfriend um, and all that stuff. So do you think a lot of the icks have to do with like physical male incompetence, like guys that just don't aren't fit? Incom incompetence in general, I think, is always going to give uh, an ick to a girls. I think um, just. You know, you go to a bar or a restaurant or something and it's crowded and, and you just kind of like are passive, like, but it's your group, right? You're passive. Like I, I've seen women get the ick because the guy didn't step up, take charge, find the host, get the seats, get to the bar. You know, like he didn't, he didn't make things easy for everybody. I, I've, I've definitely picked up on, on some of those things, like people watching after I kind of got red pilled. You start noticing little stuff like that. You start noticing the guy who's got it, who comes in, who, who leads. He's got his girl by the hand. He's leading the group. He talks to whatever. He he's um, <clears throat> not aggressive, but uh, uh, just assertive. That's the word. Yeah, yeah. He's assertive. Like we're here to do something. I'm gonna make it happen. Yeah. Um, I always say that whenever you're walking into a place with a girl, act like you're the manager, but you're undercover. Like it's your it's your restaurant or your bar or your location but you're just undercover kind of like checking on your employees that's how you should act you know like very comfortable mm -hmm. uh acting humble but deep down you know you are the man you know and you're very uh respectful but assertive and you lead her through the crowd you sit her down you pull a table chair open for her and all that stuff it's very you know you'd be surprised how low the bar is for like just a guy being aware of his surroundings that is like the number one thing i see guys uh outside of this red pill stuff like the guys that don't have that they don't have like they are in this kind of like head in the clouds thing they bump into stuff they trip life happens to them rather right. than them living life 
Yeah, and I think that's one of the biggest icks for women is that life, like men don't have that kind of peripheral vision of life where it's like, hey, there's this car coming. You know how you know how how uh women feel must feel if you're about to walk onto traffic and they grab you and pull you back? Like they must feel like, wow, I gotta really watch out for this guy. This guy's like a puppy. Like I gotta, you know, obviously once in a while it'll happen, but you know, you wanna be the guy that's mm -hmm. you wanna be the guy that's uh you know, you, you want to be her secret service agent, not the other way around, you know. But uh, we got some super chats, um, all from <laughs> not stop Trey. Uh, so we'll give him one of these. We'll give him an anime. Thank you. Thank you so much. Best of all right. <laughs> you only get one. Great. <laughs> Great. Uh, girls, if a guy is in a soft era, uh, soft guy era, ick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now stop Dre again. Ted Bundy's ick. Woman alive and breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Jack's biggest ick. Woman with opinions. <laughs> Correct. He agrees. Uh, Nuke's biggest ick. Women who like to eat food. This yeah. is also correct. Well, it's just there's so many calories out there. Like, do you have to eat them all? <laughs> I mean, we should just bring bring back Pro Anna, and all of this bullshit will be fixed. Just Pro Anna, what's that? Uh, <laughs> don't look that up. <laughs> okay, I'll look it up later. Um, but yeah, uh, it's just uh, basically the ick could be anything where a guy shows lack of, you know, the world happens to him, and, and he just keeps getting side, like he he, he bumps into stuff, trips, isn't like physically coordinated. Uh, it could be that lack of game. She says something, and it's, she he always goes to the logical path instead of the teasing, nagging, kind of playful, you know. Because mm. girls are begging us to be more fun and <clears> playful, <throat> right? Like you don't go on a date with a girl to explain about uh, taxes or 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 Bitcoin or anything like that, right? You go on a date to make her laugh, to have fun, to let her know, hey, I'm the fun guy. First, I'm not the husband material. I am the fun guy that you want to hang out with. And then you have other stuff like. Um, women have like a traumatic past or a bad relationship with a guy and they need to they don't know what exactly ruined their relationship so they go straight for something that the guy has like maybe the death of a family member in jack's case <laughs> um and they blame that even though it's not your fault guys so so when women have icks like i'd say some of them there's some truth right but since women like the introspection to really dig and be like what exactly do i not like about this guy so yeah so starting with jack should women take or should men take x personal like let's say you're watching you're scrolling through ig reels unfortunately and um you see a girl saying if you wear green uh v-neck ill like disgusting i hate you what well, what what should a guy well think first that, as first of all this is turquoise just saying, maybe the, the guys that don't know no difference between green and turquoise, ick. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a huge <laughs> ick for me. Just saying, <laughs> don't don't take it seriously. Like nine times out of ten, <clears throat> it's uh, what we used to call like a shit test. As with many things, women say online, they do it for clicks and they want to sound outrageous. It's like the chick who said she banged three hundred something guys in six months or whatever. Impossible. There's no Probabil way. probability is she she didn't, but it gets people riled up. It gets the Andrew Wilsons of the world and the Matt Walshes of the world that gets their panties in a bunch, and they want to respond to it because why would you do this? And when women do these kinds of things, where it's like, oh, this is an ick for me, and that is an ick for me, and blah 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 blah. He likes dogs. He likes cats. Oh yeah, cats over dogs is also a big one. It's like, okay, cool. You don't find that interesting. Next, you, you don't care about it. And as soon as you uh, give that response, like as soon as that that her saying that gives you a physical response or whatever or an emotional response, she wins. Congratulations. You have now done what she wants. You have given her attention. You have given her clout. That's what it's all about these days. Now, in a bar, when it's like, oh, you wear a green shirt, like yeah oh it's like i don't know about that it's like oh well sounds like a you problem to me i i love my green shirts it's like go from there or you know what start up a normal conversation like what would you suggest then 
and you go from there and you have a stupid dumb conversation about anything because aren't most conversations that start out like that about stupid dumb shit that doesn't matter anyway it's where you take everything so seriously that you lose exactly yeah. that's what i want to I agree to. with that yeah and the, the older i get i i agree with that it's fun to have fun in the beginning but uh if you start to get a little bit more skilled with mode one shout out arc rest in peace mm. um and you don't have to do it so openly but very quickly boy it really screens things out and i think that it actually shuts the ick factor down quite a bit I, I don't want to go into detail on mode one, but it's a much more direct way of communicating, even if you have desires uh, for this woman sexually. Um, it just becomes a good habit. And I'll tell you what, I've had way better conversations with people because of that trek mode than laying the foundations for covert contracts, assumptions, things like that. Just a point. Yeah, uh, it essentially boils down to don't take seriously what the gods made for fun, right? There are, uh, guys, oh, there are guys, I, I, I am begging guys to, if, if a girl has, if you see, if you, unfortunately you're on IG reels or Twitter, whatever, and women are discussing a new ick, right. And you fit that description. I want you to laugh it off, not yeah. take them so seriously and move on with your life. Because when you react, that's what they want. That's, that's the filter for them. The filter is not the ick. The filter is how you react to the ick. Hey, I bald men are, give me the ick. You just like, you, you know, you have your shit test for if you're a bald guy, you should have like five responses for women that say bald men aren't attractive. Right. You should have. And guess what? It's not that you're bald. It's how you react to her saying ill. You're bald. Right. That is the, that is the filtering that they use. The ick, a lot of the times is a filtering. It's like a shit test. Right. It's a it's a shit test that all women get together and we're like, OK, let's say this. Let's mm. See if any alphas can break through that and get, you know, start really uh, showing us a good time. So. Yeah. Nuke, Interesting. Do you think? Do you think? Nuke, do you think that it's possible? This is I'm just spitballing here, but you know how guys like to shit talk. Yes. Could this ick factor that's become popular just a female version as they're masculinizing of shit talk? Uh, yes, because it could be in a way because they want you to overcome it, right? Just like if I say something mean to you guys, I don't mean I don't want you to take it personally, right? Mm. Um. I want you to uh I want you guys to like not take it personally but like overcome it, right? If I say, "Hey Jack, mm -hmm. you have this." And you, and he's like, "Oh, screw you, asshole." And then laughs, I'd be like, "Yeah, cool." Same thing with women. Like if a woman says, "Hey Nuke, you have a big nose or something." I'd be like, "Yeah, but you know what they say about big noses or something <laughs> stupid, right?" She yeah, goes, my grandmother oh. was Jewish. So what? <laughs> <laughs> um and then they laugh. They're like, "Okay, this guy is, you know, he's he's I'll, I'll let them keep talking to me. I think that's how human beings in general, we give each other a hard time. Mm -hmm. And when guys fall for this stuff and they get mad and they and they write and they make whole Instagram pages about how mean girls are, you're missing the point. It's the playground all over again, right? Yeah. You're on a playground. At, uh, you're 10 years old. You're on a playground and you, you pull in girls' hair and girls kick sand on your shoes and they're giggling as they run away and, and all that stuff. So once you understand that this is just the little play uh, playground girl kicking sand yeah. on your shoes and laughing, you're going to appreciate women more because you will never appreciate women if you take them seriously, ever. You will go crazy. You will lose <laughs> your mind. And they don't want to be taken seriously. They don't. They hate being taken seriously. They are. They want to have fun. There's literal songs about that. Uh, girls just want to have fun. So yeah, share the screen. Hold on, let me get this. Uh, let me uh, give this guy uh, an anime. Thank you. Thank you so much, best friend. Yeah, that's actually a uh, uh, John Fitch on the right there. That's the anime. <laughs> um, so we got uh, two dollars from Kudos. Thumbs up. Thank you, sir. All right, so let's get to this. Hmm. Man suffers only because he takes seriously what the gods made for fun. Exactly. Yep, and that's um, it. That is, you, you guys, you will enjoy women more once you, once you first off, watch what they do, right? I saw a post where a girl, uh, where it was both uh, the the Jack Ballerina guy that we all know about and <clears throat> some chick, some former prostitute chick, both agreeing that there was a guy in the gym who tried to lift like 440 pounds, which is a very... Odd, specific, oddly specific weight, right? And he couldn't, right? And everyone was like, oh, I've seen this so many times. A girl leaves him because he tried to 
uh, lift a certain weight and he couldn't and she left. Right. The reason they post stuff like that is not because they want they're trying to get you to like step up to a certain level to be a better man or a better beta for them. Right. So when a girl says, I don't like men under 510 or I don't like men that aren't jacked or I don't like men that aren't rich. She's she's had sex with broke men, broke men that are, are sleeping on a, a mattress. Right. Broke drummers, uh, broke bartenders, whatever. The reason she says that is because she wants the general population of men to work harder for her and it gives her status and it makes it's like a flex, right? Like, look at my standards. Only guys that meet these standards can have sex with me and all that. And I'm sure, Jack, you know all about this because uh, we, we've talked about it before on your show where women are say these crazy standards and then they end up with the biggest loser <laughs> to the point where it's like you him. Oh, I don't even want to watch you anymore. Gross. <laughs> So what, what do you have to say about that, Chad? <laughs> <laughs> are you are you insinuating something, sir? <laughs> no, I mean, say we just talked about it on your show. No, we did, we did. But like, uh, who is a good example? It's that one actor guy um, who dated Kim Kardashian. Oh, someone Pete, uh, else, Pete something. And, and the Russian uh, model who was in Blurred Lines, the video. Pete. Uh... Wow, what's his name? Uh, Pete Buscemi? No. Who's the, who's the comedian? Pete something? Uh, Pete something. But like even with um, musicians in general, you see it all the time. If you're in the music scene or whatever and you know how to play an instrument, girls throw themselves at you. I've seen it here in the music scene. I've seen it everywhere in the music scene. Um uh, with broke guys, I mean, Ryan could use, uh, used to tell you stories about that too, and that's where the phrase come came from, of not a pot to piss in nor a window to throw it out of, which made guys realize that hey, wait a minute, for like the whole short term uh, fun alpha side of hypergamy, blessed be his name. Uh, what you really want is just be the fun guy. Don't worry so much about the status and the money and the whatever. And what helps with that too is do you have a look? Like the broke drummer who sleeps on a mattress is a look. Now, if you can actually play, play the drums, that really helps. You gotta, look like, you gotta look like Russell Brand. You gotta have like the jacket and the, yeah. the oversized tank yeah. top. And like if you actually drum. play an instrument and and are that guy you can get a lot you can get away with a lot of things that like these trads tell you to worry about that peterson and everybody tells you to worry about so much because nine times out of ten girls don't really care that much about status or like the the wealth uh, well i mean status in their community i think is important well yeah like hypergamy isn't a straight jacket like if right. if you're like a man in a community and she sees donald trump across the street she's not going to leave you for donald trump or for yeah uh, you yeah. know but it's like fuck files I mean, if, if, if it's her cousins and close relatives and friends from school in that community like that's still there's still a hierarchy there and they want to look good for that community. but it's also it's also that quote from Fuck Files from Ryan. Like, um, girls love to be sluts. They just don't want anybody to know that they love to be sluts. Yeah, that's... Um, do you think... So, in terms of uh, X, do you think, like, there's there were some very unattractive women <laughs> there, high-calorie humans, high -calorie uh, saying that they have X too. High-calorie humans. Uh, I, I'll ask uh, John, you first, and then Thor... Why do you think it's the most unattractive women? That most they've got nothing else to do. That have the they've got, they've got nothing else to do but complain about men and and, and talk <laughs> about things that they don't really get to experience. You know, um, they probably the mids probably have a lot of. I feel bad for them because the top tier guys just use them to pump and dump, mm -hmm. while they continue to date. You know, the nines and tens and. And then they're like, why are these guys always treating me like shit and whatever? They don't understand what's happening in the current atmosphere where all the all the girls are circling a small amount of guys and the guys are just picking off what they want. If they're learning game and they have the frame to uh, to maintain. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. Man. It's sure. You know, 
man. I'll take yeah. I'll take that on. Yeah, take that uh, on. <laughs> how's the microphone doing now, guys? Good. Perfect. It was good before. Okay. Now it's even better. So. Okay, good. I just locked it in place. I guess the laptop's going to do what it's going to do. Uh, so let's talk about high calorie. I like to call them high entropy women. If you don't know what entropy <laughs> is, go take a look. I do. I do. <laughs> and and what happens here is since it's high entropy, the only thing they need they need attention more in the bank than anything else to fill that slide and make them not realize that it, that entropy is so high with them. Um, so any attention is going to be placed into that attention bank. That's really what I think it is. And have you ever heard, in fact, this affects all humans, but you see it with the, with the women too, is let's just use a workplace as an example. You get somebody that complains. Maybe it's icky because the water cooler's in the wrong spot. Or the break room's wrong. They didn't set up the ball pit for the kids when they come to work day. And it's just complaint after complaint after complaint. And it spreads like cancer everywhere because they need attention and they're in a boring job or a boring life. They uh, haven't reached their peak physical performance levels or even thought levels. I think it's an attention thing to be, if you're going to boil it down all the way, that's the need is uh, they need the attention. And an ick is a good enough attention to get her girlfriend saying, oh, yeah, I don't like this ick. Well, I don't like that ick. So let's ick together until we're satisfied of venting our icks out in a very negative fashion. And whoever's listening to us, they can carry those icks and we'll feel a lot better about it. Yeah. Uh, personally, uh, th yeah, that's a really good perspective. Like, first off, like, uh, a lot of guys have revenge fantasies, right? I always say you're going to get your revenge mm -hmm. fantasy, but you won't like it. You know, it's going to be very dark and all that stuff. You know, everyone has their own thing about what, how women's life is going to turn out and all that stuff. I personally, I see we dunk on uh, high calorie women all the time, right? It's funny. Um, they deserve it because, like, if you don't care about yourself, why should I, right? Um, but when you, when in the real world, even though women, uh, high calorie women are getting laid and they are getting male attention, the they have to see every day their friends get chosen over them every yeah. single day. Whether it be they, they, their friends get more attention, they get picked up for a salsa dance, or they get more dates, or she gets pumped and dumped and she doesn't, and her friends are getting like dinner dates while she's getting, you know, she's a she's a moped, right? Like no one wants to be seen in public with her, right? So I think there's an ego thing. And in order, just like when you when you on a dating profile, the chubby chicks will always their first pick is always them with their hot friends. So you keep swiping yeah. uh, and then there's a higher chance of you swiping. Right. It's the same thing. It's like they, they get together with their hot friends and they say all these things because they want to in the club, the hot girl club. Right. And they know they're not in the hot girl club because they it's proven to them daily, 24 seven. So they they post. Oh, if if. Uh, I'm a, I'm, you know, I'm not attractive, but if he doesn't do this thing, he's not up to my standards. And it's just like, uh, sorry, I, you know, I, we're not, I, you're not in the club, you know, like you're, you, you have to stay outside. <laughs> you're not coming into this club. So that's, that's the reason I, I believe and you guys are both, yeah, spot on. And also, uh, you gotta be a little bitter. Like you're not getting the male attention you want. So you, you're yeah. going to lash out. So a lot of icks. My, brings me to my next thing about it is like, do you think it's mean spirited? Do you think these women are have failed with men in the past and um, ma they're making it everyone's problems and they're just trying to get on this train of men aren't good enough for me? What do you think, Jack? Am I, no, I'm not muted. Uh, if it's actually mean spirited, no, not really. I don't think so. It's like I said, I think they just do it for the clout and the attention to say the most outrageous shit they can think of to get people riled up. That's what I really think it is. Well, it is a pissing contest between the girls themselves. They love embarrassing men in front of each other. Yeah. They would puff they their chest out a little bit. It's like when we guys talk about how hot the chick was they picked up at the bar or whatever. Hey, like women want to talk about how many guys they turn down or how many guys aren't good enough for them mm -hmm. while sitting oh. with the homeless guy behind Burger King. You, yeah, exactly. Like we mentioned the musician, but there's nobody who gets laid more than the broke photographer. Yeah. Think or about that. Bartender. Yeah. Or the bartender too. Well, that's doorman. Like... Well, yeah, the, the endless sea, the endless sea of simps 
while this may not start out as, you know, intending to be negative or harmful, it is attention. It helps. But boy, the endless sea of simps and the thirst is going to amplify this. And uh, come on, guys, you know, it's worse than it's ever been. You know, even the highest entropy woman is going to have some attention. And even if it's bad attention, she'll seek it. And there's plenty of guys that'll do it. Th things are getting weird out there, guys. They are. Yeah. Like, for, for younger guys, <laughs> I mean, Thor, Thor knows even more than I do. But as you get older, like you start seeing things and, and noticing bigger changes because in a 20-year span, a lot happens. Mm -hmm. I was scrolling through. Uh, there's this thing called the Underground Forum that a lot of MMA people go on to and talk about stuff, right? And uh, somebody put up a thread and it's like rare pictures. And there's a bunch of just people posting rare old photos. And there's like photos from the 90s and 2000s um, fight stuff. And just looking at the athletes, looking at those fighters, looking how they dressed, how they walked, how they carried themselves in some of the videos and things that were posted, it was different. It was only 20 years ago, but it was different. These guys were very manly people. Right. And you remember these guys were traveling around the world to beat people up for like three thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars. Right. Like they were there about the fight. It was that was why they were there. They wanted to fight and win a fight. And, Love of the game. Yeah, it was just a different it was different. And now, you know, you go to gyms or you watch the fights and stuff, like everybody's really soft. Even the toughest guys still seem very feminine by the standards just 20 years ago. Yeah. Agreed. And it, it, I like in another 20 years, like I'm like the kids that are my kids age now, like, like what kind of like little puffs are they going to be? Well, it's discouraged so bad and it's, it's kind of, it, it's not needed. It's not a bad thing, but <laughs> John, this is on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, the, it, it, you know, demas you know, emasculating the, the nation. I got, I mean, I don't see how that's a good idea. You yeah. know, the bankers get rich, they flood the border with different people. And what's going to happen? Like, it's going to be chaos. Like, I don't see how you're going to develop order out of this chaos they're creating. Either that or it's, they're, they're, they're just trying to control the the economic collapse yeah I, I think transformational leaders that have dominant masculine presence about themselves and understand it come in all ages because every person every man that exists as he becomes a man and fulfills his burden of performance will have opportunities to recognize that and when they do they can step up to that for themselves and the funny thing happens when that happens others become attracted to it because it's a natural conventional way of being masculine so i hold out a lot of hope for that because everybody sitting here started somewhere and they picked up on this and it's amazing what's really amazed me is the amount of people that actually have found value in what we've said just doing fun things on saturday and so i think there's hope that some transformational leaders will come up we see pieces of it like it or not you see a little piece of it in Jordan Peterson, small piece, small piece, forget the rest. Then a small piece with Andrew and Tristan, boom, boom, whatever they say, whatever. But you see these pieces creeping <laughs> through more and more and more. Tucker Carlson has it. Elon Musk has a piece. These little pieces of masculinity are peeking through, in my opinion, more than they have in 50 years. It's hard to see because of all the negativity. But if you're out there thinking it's all doom and gloom, I think it's not. We're just in a spot where we're still in that valley of darkness and the lightning is just starting. Well, yeah. it's it, uh, the, when you start focusing too much on the, those outside things and the things you can't really control that really takes you off your path, the path you're supposed yeah. to be on. So you, you can, it's important not to focus on that stuff too much. It's hard not to uh, notice it because it's yeah. right in front of your face, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not dwelling on it. I notice, and I'm like, no, nah, well, you got to stay on your path. You got to correct yourself. Oh, well, you're good. Yeah. You know, worrying about what China's doing. To the environment what, yeah. what the hell are you going to do about it no yeah. what's your plan yeah. you know what's your plan for it so yeah so maybe just focus on yourself and your world maybe you just create yes. less waste and you be less wasteful and you just stick to the things that you're supposed to do and the things that god wants you to do like 
you could be all right. Oh, yeah. you know, it's funny. It's just like, not to sidetrack, but John, you know this well. Um, you know, when you are doing that and you're on mission, students appear, mentorships appear. And I know that's happened to you. And it's really kind of an amazing thing. And to look back at what they accomplished is, is quite a legacy. So I do see some hope out of all of this with all that negativity and the ick that comes in. But boy, we're not getting any favors with TikToks. <laughs> Twitter, but that's right? the thing too, right? Like for guys watching this, why the hell are you on TikTok? Like that, <laughs> that would be my first fucking question. Why the hell are you on Yeah. Yeah, like, IG, IG has all the memes you need. Like I'm on IG Reels because the memes are so good. But pretty funny. The problem is with like, I like, you know, I like, I look up stuff for the, like my dog breed because I like my dog breed. So I look up dog stuff and I look up uh, anime and I look up workout stuff and, and all the, like, like, you know, guy stuff. Right. But mm. every time I log into the app, it always seems like it's all converging into like whip, young women shaking their ass and titties. That is like, but it's within the realm. Like, for example, if I look up, uh, I don't know, like gym stuff. Right. I'm like, cool some cool gym quotes and then Arnold Schwarzenegger interviews, stuff like that. And then all of a sudden it's a girl with, you know, maybe even a fake ass bending over the camera. And I'm like, what the hell? I just closed this and opened it the next day. And the thing is my monkey brain likes it. Yeah. Cause I'm a dude. I like asses, you know, I like oh. female asses, <laughs> but at, at a certain point, it's like, this is the point of these apps. It's to, it's to converge everything into giving women a lot of so, uh, social media power so they can monetize it. It's, it's, it's like I can't even look up stuff for my own dog breed because eventually it's going to it's going to turn into a girl holding a Shiba Inu with her boobs out, you know, shaking her. I'm like, I'm looking up puppy stuff. No, I have uh, I have um, what is it? Nature is metal or something like that. I follow yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, that one's good. Yeah. horrible, like animals killing each other, but they like sell space. So like I'll be scrolling through and I'll be like some girl shaking her tits and stuff around. I'm like, what the what the fuck is this? I'm trying to like watch animals. Yeah, like right now, so like anime, video games, and gym stuff. And then now I got like a the prostitute, the famous prostitute everyone saw. I, what is that doing? Like, <laughs> what is that doing on my on my it's feet? Being but, but that's ne not necessarily what I meant. I meant the um, the girls raging on men. Where it's like, why why would you even care about that? Like a girl shaking her ass and whatever. Like, I understand why somebody would want to click on that. We are all men yeah. and we do. Although I'm more of a breast guy myself, in all honesty. And I hope we're going to make a comeback because I am so sick and fucking tired of that ass pose on online dating and wherever. Where it's like, look at my ass. It's like, do you have tits? But I digress. I know. It's I like mean, I personally... Got a starfish navigation system. I don't need to see that. Yeah, exactly. But it's like, <laughs> why, why, as a man, do you consume the content of women shitting on men? Is well, my biggest I, question. I would say, let me get a super chat and we can get into that. Hold on, because that goes with the egg stuff. Thank you so much, best of friend. The unrealized thoughts with the two dollar super chest. Thank you, sir. Thoughts on people promoting healing and dates. Let's finish the conversation and we'll get back to that. Unrealized thoughts. Thank you for the super chat. All right. So, where were we? You said why are, why are men why are men and women consuming things that make like criticize their gender or makes their gender look bad? Blah blah. blah. You were saying yeah. Why like why are you consuming content that makes you um yeah where where women only shit on men. Because it will only skew your worldview even more. Like, we had a guy in the chat a while back uh, during Red Evening. He was so worried about uh, our, the Facebook group, Are We Dating the Same Guy? I mean, you were on there. And he was so worried about it. And he, he was afraid of dating because women might say a terrible thing about him. And it's like, dude, just don't look at the Facebook page. And even if you land on there, there will probably be some girl who's like, oh, is he on there? Oh, that's interesting. And then we got kind of further into that where it's like, oh, so, so he's a wife beater. Is he? It's like, there's always that one chick that goes, really? What's his name? Like, <laughs> well, well, the thing is, well, the thing is like the, the reason guys find this stuff right it's because it's all lumped together first off social media doesn't make money putting people in echo chambers a lot of people think that social media is an echo chamber absolutely not there would be no money to make because we, we we'd all be talking about like how to build a fence or 
how to you know route some cables through our through our wall or something like my that. My favorite. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but right now we're talking about the opposite sex because we're 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 placed in on social media with people who disagree with us, and that creates engagement, right? Do you think do you think uh, Elon and, and Facebook and all these people they don't know that they know that if if they if they show if they put you put some weird opinion on their for you page or Instagram and and I'm, you decide to comment on that it's going to create engagement which creates money for them you know I'm really hoping people get tired of this shit it's, <laughs> I it's think they are. I, was just, I was just talking about this with my girl the other day like like everybody the whole industry nowadays is people making money on YouTube by talking about shit they don't know anything about mostly mm -hmm. you know it's just oh i'm gonna debate this guy and this guy's gonna debate me yeah, I'm some guy who plays video games him, and they're gonna say the new things at me and then yeah some guy and, uh, playing video games is gonna decide the future of the country uh, debating the future of the country i'm like exactly like and who, who the hell are these guys like who the yeah. hell are like this guy, the destiny guy the the cuck smurf or whatever yeah. Like, how has yeah, he not just laughed out of every room or every situation he's ever in? For he, the has a, he has a phone. That's why. Because when he debates, he has a phone. Yeah, he, a he's got a Palestinian boyfriend now or something or an Israeli. Yeah. I don't fucking it's know. It's just yeah. weird. It's like, I don't understand how, like, this stuff is even interesting to anybody. Like, I I'm, I'm getting a little sick of some of the red pill stuff. It's, it's niche. Yeah, boring. it's niche. Yeah, it's really. Because I, I, I learned it. I, I uh, embodied it. I found an amazing woman, right, to live my life with, and we're doing great, and things are great, and I just yeah. am so, uh, like, it's sort of the same conversation with a lot of these people. Well, question for Thor and Jack. We'll start with Thor. Do you believe that, or do you think that a lot of guys follow these icks, like the ick pages and the girls, the street interviews where girls are mean and stuff like that? As a way to absolve themselves the responsibility of getting women or going out and meeting and talking and interacting with women. Like, oh, this is my excuse to give up and not try anymore. I would think there's a percentage. I couldn't tell you what it was. I think it's more women. I think the women find validation in each other's icks because of the status thing. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not enough. I mean, look, look at the videos being made as women approach 30. Where's all the good men? Mm -hmm. Well, there's too many ick men. I mean, this is a this is a a conversation that's been around for a while, and we all know it's true. We've been raising a generation or two of sissies. Yeah, easy to pe point out the icks. Now, do men use it as an excuse? I don't think some of them will, particularly in the black pill arena, things like that. And they're going to convince themselves that I am who I am. If she loved me, she'd love me for all my icks. Placing all responsibility on her for the burden of performance that he himself carries. Yeah, and that's, that's a fair, giant right? mistake. Yeah, and that's, that's where, fair. and that's where our fundamental red pill conversations need to go. It's been sensationalized, and the neocons have grabbed onto it for all of the harshness of it, so they can use those edges of the red pill to elicit views and money. Shoot, even some of our they've got nothing else to talk about. They have to have yeah. a boogeyman. Yeah. And, and they don't provide any answers. Yeah. And so for like one of the things I found recently just in private conversations is a lot of stuff we did back in the late, you know, 2008 through 2013, where we really integrated a lot of this valuable information. I mean, Jack will know Book of Poop stuff, uh, Chateau Artis, uh, uh, Soul Swap, where all of it came from. There's so many fundamentals and there is a tremendous amount of guys that are attracted to the red pill sensationalism today that don't have any idea about that stuff. So yes. Even yes. Scored about it. What oh, my God. You are carrying the flag for us, and I, I love it. And that's really, you know, that's one of the philosophies of the dragon ship is to do that. Mm -hmm. Even though it's boring for us, possibly, it is immensely valuable. Yeah. I, I do console, consoles with guys. And these guys are not like hideous. They're guys with normal jobs, some really, you know, engineers, high level guys, you know, guys that finally got to a point in their life where, hey, I I, I want to start, you know, talking to women. I, you know, I developed myself and it's always the ego is that they have yeah. to get over. Right. Because this is what the ick list is. They're playing into the male ego. Hey, you're not good enough. And then you have to ask yourself as a man. And I'm really serious about this. Who are you not good enough for? Because. My my parents, your parents are probably proud of you, and they're like, "Man, my son, or you know, is pretty good 
you know, he's done well. Your friends probably like you and think you're funny, hopefully. You know, you probably have people at work that respect your opinion and think, yeah, this guy knows what he's talking about. Especially when you hit your early 30s, everyone starts respecting your opinion out of nowhere. Like, oh, you know what you're talking about. Um, and some girl on the Internet wrote a stupid list about how she doesn't like dudes who wear like red sneakers or something. Um, and, and you're taking that personally, then you have a lot of inner work to do as a guy, because now you're letting the opinion of people who don't matter. Right. And I'll tell you this, the way you get over. <laughs> yeah. You wait, that that get, that just gave me the hick, Jack. I gotta kick you off. You just gave okay. me the hick. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, guys, there's this thing called inner game, which men lack so much. And that's where you, you know, that's why we have to talk about we have to talk about Chateau Hartis. We have to talk about the old Rouge. We have to talk about the the So Suave forums, the old times when guys didn't care about clout or being right. They wanted to get laid. They want their wives to have sex with them. Because at the end of the day, how the hell are you as a man are you going to take on the world when you let a 22-year-old girl that's chubby, right, that's probably just for the streets or, you know, whatever, um, tell you that because you wear your hat a certain way or you're 5'9", that you're you're not good enough for her. Like, are you serious, dude? Where is your inner game? I, you're going to go through life with no inner game. You're going to get constantly – you're going to be depressed your whole life, you know? I, I do love, though, and – I don't see a lot of them, but every now and then, like every now and then, they they ask a guy like, "What's your ick in a girl?" And like he very seriously stands there and he thinks, "You know what? If she has like monetary issues, I would find that a bit of an issue. Um, if she would have like addiction issues or maybe uh, emotional issues, behavioral issues, you know, like things like that, that might actually cause a problem. Nothing really superficial or anything, just actual genuine shit that might cause trouble. And the comments just go wild. Like, how dare he judge her and blah, blah, blah. It's like... At least he brings up something the woman can nine times out of ten do something about. It's like if she hadn't made stupid choices or if she had made stupid choices. Where it's like, you know, another guy's kid, like, look, if you love the kid, that's fine. But, like, for, it's not for me. I've seen a guy very respectfully bring that up where it's like, you know, it's just not for me. And he got slaughtered. Absolutely slaughtered because of it. Uh-oh. Yeah. So... I wanted to you segue to sort of segue into this. Um, here's one of the things that we talk about in the red pill about perfect is boring. So um, here's uh, here's Kaka's ex-wife. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Who's uh, Kaka? I think he's Kaka. a he's a famous football player or was. Oh. oh, I thought you meant the Spanish version. Oh no, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and he, you know, handsome guy look hot wife um or he had a hot wife and his hot wife uh you know recently came out saying that he left him a famous football star um with two you know with kids and all that stuff um because he was too perfect right like he was too good it's almost like the tom brady situation where you know like he loved his kids he he, he was loved by the country um, and all that. I don't know what country he's from. Maybe Argentina. Uh, mm. But it says here, Kaka never cheated on me. He was he always treated me well. He gave me a wonderful family, but I wasn't happy because something was missing. The problem is that he's too perfect for me. Celico was quoted by NDTV. So this is what happens when guys buy into the, the ache list, right? They try to become this perfect guy with the perfect haircut and the perfect... They, they try to become the best, which is good, right? But the problem is you're doing it for someone else. You're not doing it for yourself, right? And then you come to realize that even doing – you're never going to make women happy all the time. They're going to find something about you they don't like, whether it be within the span of a, a month, six months, 20 years, or after having their kids. It doesn't matter. The ickless doesn't matter because no matter what you do as a guy, women one day will probably be like, I don't want you anymore. There are no guarantees, right? So, uh, Jack, you were going to say something? That, well, that's where indignation comes from because, like, no, no offense. This man will out-earn me every step on the way. He has an absolutely beautiful – he had an absolutely beautiful wife, and he has great kids. But yeah. I don't know why, but I can just see on his face he never did any indignation. 
There was never any any indignation. They never argue, whatever. But he never annoyed her either. Like I don't know about you guys, but I when when I have a girlfriend, Probably a really nice guy. <laughs> no, where it's like when I have a girlfriend, I like to annoy her every now and then. Yeah, like I just like to do that. Where I put up a song in the radio, I know she hates. Manufacture. Yeah, you got to manufacture drama, or else she'll get bored. Or manufacture yeah. drama. You you have to start some shit every now and then and it can be fun shit or it can be like serious shit but as long as you control it you're fine but i don't know why but he already looks like no we never did that or whatever is accent might have been and i i want to real quick because john brought up something where it's like you get tired of the podcast and whatever it's like there's also this thing going around where people are arguing for arguing sake and yeah, yeah, yeah. i that's I a big could, deal I could not agree with that's you like more. That's what it all is now, because nobody's really yeah. actually trying to like. Well, that's kind of why. This is kind of why I every now and then bring up the 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 mundane shit of like pizza versus burgers or whatever, because that's actually fun. It's actually fun to talk about that shit. Like John, I still want to do a show with you about our favorite conspiracy theory. That so would be hilarious. So Jack, have you? I, I have to dig it up, but. For a long time now, women have been taught in in uh, socially and by their mothers and by all of the feminists that uh, challenging a man to be his best is what they're supposed to do. And what that comes off as is, it, is sign language. It's need to be right. It's argumentative. It's a debate field. It's challenging constantly. That's a really bad thing in the long run for relationships. Yeah, uh, it is. And you can not- observe it everywhere right now. Yeah. Because it's not fun. Like, if you are in love with somebody or whatever, and the the only thing this person does is argue with you over mm-hmm. every little mundane thing, not yep. for the fun of it, but, like, for, for actual argument's sake, it's like, yeah. that will break a relationship so yep. fast because you're, you're not having fun anymore. You're not enjoying your company anymore because everything needs to be a goddamn debate. And it starts out, I mean, it plants seeds of contempt and it starts right out from date one, two, and three. You've all experienced it. Oh, this or that. Well, I disagree. Have, have you ever heard when you're engaging with someone like that and I they'll disagree with you? Say, I, I, I completely agree with you. But then they completely disagree with you. Oh, I have a co-worker. So that's a discount. Yep. I have a coworker like that. And you know what? You know what I find so horrible it's about some people and Thor, like everybody on this panel will know this. You will all know this. So all of us have tried keto, carnivore, paleo diet, right? Sure. All of it did wonders for us, correct? Yep. And there's always some fat fucking bitch who then turns to you and says, Oh, but I disagree with you. Like, how can you disagree with me? You are literally fat and out of shape. And you're telling me, a guy who was ripped and in shape and probably more healthy than you, that you disagree with him. On what (laughs) fucking grounds do you even think? Just for the challenge, Jack. And I got a story for you because I've heard this all the time being in this space. I'll have a woman that's, you know, substantially overweight, wanting to get into shape, so-called, right? And... And when I'm interviewing, I'm taking these things together, particularly if she wants to get into shape. I can tell you her success and failure rate because of what you just said. She'll be overweight, let's say 45 pounds or 50 pounds overweight. And we'll get into a spot when it comes to diet, okay? Doesn't matter what diet. We're talking uh, total daily uh, energy expenditure for calories because who knows what she likes. You need to keep her on what she likes. Keep it even so that calorie restriction will work. And then it comes out two things. It comes out in this format. Uh, Yeah, you know, I know I'm really overweight, but, you know, uh, I don't want my boobs to shrink. And saggy skin is a real problem for me. And I'm like, saggy skin is a problem. I'll tell you this. Saggy skin is way more sexy than a ton of lard on your body and more healthy, too. And by the way, saggy skin will go away over time. But no, no, saggy skin is too much. Well, you can conceal that in lots of ways, you know. The fat you can't. Nope, nope. Saggy skin's a big effing problem. And if I get that far, I don't want to be look like the Hulk. Woman, you're never going to look like the Hulk. I'll take no. your money, but you will never succeed more than 10 pounds. 
Oh, because no. of the mindset. Have you guys ever heard that at all? Being yeah, a man, yeah every girl oh, says yeah, that. Yeah, That's yeah. normal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man, every girl. I have had, I, uh, I've had a couple of female clients back when I worked in a gym. Like, I don't want to get bulky and blah, blah, blah. It's like, lady, do you know how much effort you need to put it, in to it, actually it, get bulky? It'll never happen without PEDs for women. <laughs> Sorry. How much are you gonna have to it, it's not going to happen. It huh. is an excuse for their mentality to say, I'm not changing anything. I want to place the accountability and responsibility on you for me to look good. And, not, yeah, and, and then they complain things. and then they complain men date younger. It's like, I wonder why. Me? <laughs> and then when yeah, it gets hard, fat makes me look better because my boobs are bigger. You know what? Fat boobs are still fat boobs. Yeah, you're going to get some saggy skin. But you know what? That's way sexier than, you know. I would trade in $4,000 any day to have – uh, her being overweight, not having anything to do with her cup size. I just yeah. know that fat, uh, formerly fat chicks are really good on the on certain acts in bed because they had to be before, and those skills don't go. That's away. true. Oh, That's what's true. Hard when they get what past, you guys know what I'm talking true. about. You guys know what I'm talking. Yeah, what was hard when they get close? It's great. When they get what past was, all that stuff and dedicate, they're fantastic. Yeah. What was Art Twinger's quote about that again? It's like uh, fat chicks used to have blowjobs, but nowadays every chick does a blowjob, so now they don't even have that anymore. Something like that. Yeah. I can't remember. Something like that. Art yeah. helped me out. I, uh, I dated, I casually dated a, a former fat chick, and she put in the work. She was fit. She was on yeah. She still had more work to do, but she was, you know, um, and yeah, I had a had a hard time letting her go. <laughs> it was, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, you. Everyone has a hard time letting their throat go go. So thank you, wherever wherever you are. I hope you're happy and you find the men. Thank you for everything. <laughs> no, and I like them. I I just brought it back to what what um, what John was saying about that mental attitude and and uh, the ick factor, and then making the excuse that. Well, I want to go so far as work out, but then when it comes to the diet part, which was what he was talking about, we're all talking about, is I can't go that far because I don't want saggy skin. That is pulling the pin. I'm not doing it. But yeah, you'll see that. And it becomes argumentative. Um, and that's what it, really, boy, I wish we didn't have that today, but everything's a debate. Watch even men's podcasts right now where – it's all about verbal combat, and, and it's the most benign, weird, negative stuff I've ever yeah. seen. No matter what you say, Nuke, you can say, hey, you know what, Thor? It's a fantastic day. I said, really, Nuke? You think it's that much of a fantastic day? I heard the weather was shitty where you're at. What do you think yeah. about that? And it's like, whoa. But this what is, yeah, what this is one mean, of the good things. What do you mean, good morning? Are you telling me <laughs> exactly. that this morning is good, or yeah. are you That's wishing a problematic? Good the, the fact that you're forcing people to acknowledge as a good morning. Let's dive into that real quick about how yeah. you think it's a good morning. Why do you think it's a good morning? Well, Duke, <laughs> you're alive and the sun's out, and I had a boner this morning, so my health, my 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 testosterone levels are good. So it is a good morning, sir. <laughs> it's a I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah, it's surprising how many people take that tack and actually. If you look at current streaming and debates, it's it's taken to the next level because I think people want that rush of, oh, my God, what did he say? What is it? What is it? And it's bled into real life. I've noticed this in real life just because I like to observe people in real life. I know you guys do, too. I bet Nuke, you do this, too. When you're out yeah. about, you're just go watching and yeah, listening. Watch people. Yeah. And it, it is an interesting study to see how things changed over the years. I, I think I think it's. We're not in a crisis. It's just interesting to watch right now. Mm -hmm. And people are starting to notice, which is probably a good thing. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's let's uh, address this and then we'll wrap for today. Um, unrealized thoughts with the two dollars thoughts on people promoting healing and dates. Uh, look, healing is like a ther it's therapy language. It's like astrology. When a woman starts using therapy language, just go with it. Give her the space to talk about therapy and the healing language and all that stuff <laughs> remember you're not there to convince her of anything you're not there to teach her of anything you're there to enter to entertain her she is bored you are her you are her escape from the drab of work her boring friends her boring job her boring social media her boring orbiters at all they they all call her beautiful on social media you could be the guy you, she's on a date with you she shaved her legs she she probably shaved her hoo ha too. She canceled the call with her mom. She walked her dog early. She went between two dresses, all to sit down in front of you, and you're gonna try to 
make her be as boring as everything else in her life. No, that's not your job. Your job is to make her have the tingles. So just go with it. And, you know, like healing. Yeah. Tell me, how have you healed? You know, like what? A, and then, you know, just go with it, dude. Like you don't have to worry. There are no thoughts. You are there. Just remember the main goal is to make her laugh and smile and feel relaxed around you because you are the fun guy. So any, you guys have any thoughts on that? Um, um, not, not, not specifically. Like what, what does he mean with like healing in dates? Like I what, guess what maybe I just say like, maybe it sounds like, like uh, using therapy language to, de to describe as a descriptor for, uh, for us guys, it's just thugging it out and just taking, you know, Eating the shit sandwich. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. It'd be like somebody probably, I'm going to make an assumption here. I don't want to, but something like somebody that's coming in with all the love language, uh, communication, things like yeah, that. Yeah, it's maybe. astrology. Yeah, it's yeah. astrology. Yeah, it's just another I, I have a quote on that. Where is it? God damn it. Come on. It's one of my, I, I was actually pretty proud of that. Uh, <laughs> I heal through blowjobs, ma'am. <laughs> Well, it is true, though. It is true. But did you know that... If you show me your boobs, I'll heal much faster. I've gone through a trial. That is true. That is true. Like, uh, tits do cure my depression, in yes. all honesty. It is true. But, like, what was it again? Guys will use uh, love languages, um, attachment theory, and whatever, all as an excuse for their wife acting in a way they do not want to tolerate oh yeah that's like married red pill stuff where like uh, no that was mine actually that was you um yeah. uh where they act uh where w women act out and men are like oh she just has this attachment style so this is normal i'm like no dude if she's making you uncomfortable or pissing you off that's a problem it doesn't matter what bullshit she came with either she's on your program or she's not one or the other you know yeah, yeah. No, pretty much all right, so uh, if you guys, oh, well, I have one more thing to say, and then we'll close out for the day because you guys got things to do. But I just wanted to show you guys what the male version of the ick list is. But since we we still like women a lot, here oh, is I the, got it. The, here is the male version of the ick. It is this meme right here, <laughs> where a lot of women are interpreting this as, oh, this is just criticizing us, we you know, or or is mean spirited. Where deep down. Every guy sees this meme when it's well done and just smiles a little bit and just like, yeah, my girl's just like that, but I love her, right? And I want you guys to see the, the female ick list the same, where women bitch and complain about all these weird things about men that we can't control or that we do automatically because it's who we are. They, what they're saying is, I love when men act like men, and I'm going to continue having sex with them and dating and marry them because I like when men act the way they are, you know, basically the good eggs, you know, not, not the whole bump into stuff and gets hit by a car in traffic or something like that. But yeah, well, that's all. Unless you guys have any thoughts, I think. Uh, I mean, that's a good one though. Can I use one of your pocket? But here I, uh, I finally found it again. Like the quote was love languages, attachment theory and personality types are used by a guy to treat his wife and or girlfriend, like a do it yourself project to placate to her and rationalize her behaviors easier than looking inward and admitting to himself, this isn't how he wants to be treated. And it comes from the post, you can't control anything. On my sub stack. Damn, that's actually, a, that's a really good quote. I should probably remember Thank you. that. Yeah. Anyways, guys, uh, great show. A lot of good insight. I hope you guys can make a sense of women's uh, behavior online and the way they act and all that stuff. Realize that um, don't take them seriously, right? So, uh, closing statements like and where, where can we find you? Yeah. Uh, John. Yeah. Just like Pokemon. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't yell at your kid for telling you about Pokemon. It's all Just right. go with it. Ask them what go their favorite it. is. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. I've got a, uh, a new uh, seminar that I have uh, videoed and put up on Gumroad when I went to Texarkana, uh, it's available up now. It's ready for purchase. Um, you'll learn how to close the distance, take a guy down with a double leg and get to a smash position. It's a little thread I put together for those guys out there. Um, and you can access it too. That's all I got. Uh, watch UFC tonight and tune in to John Fish Knows Nothing tomorrow, 7 p.m. on the left coast. Um We'll be talking about the fights or bare knuckles yesterday and 
Uh, PFL was yesterday too, so there's some good fights. Um, so yeah, I'll check you guys later. All right, thanks, John. Appreciate you coming on and sharing your insight. The Pokemon uh, metaphor was really good, right? It really does make sense. Like if you if you guys have a nephew or a son or someone young in your uh, a family member who tries to show you their Pokemon cards and they're like, this one shoots fire, this one is water, like really explaining it to you. And you're just like, this doesn't exist. They're going to hate you. They're going to hate you. They're not going to want to be around you anymore. And that's not how you treat children. Um, but yeah, great. Th uh, thanks, Sean. Thor? Yeah, shout out to Mona. Thank you for the comment. Uh, speaking of comments, the reason I'm wearing the eye patch is because uh, my distance is like this, which is fine for everyday stuff. But when I have to read, I just need to do it out of one eye right now. But uh, you can find me on the Dragon Ship. And, of course, all these guys are always welcome on the Dragon Ship at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time on RP Thor, And, of course, streaming to all their channels where we continue a conversation today. Uh, HUDS is going to host at the helm of the Dragon Ship. Uh, and he's going to be talking about battle scars, which will be an interesting conversation for sure. So go and see that. Uh, as far as my stuff is concerned, guys, I'm getting a lot of interest right now over on Become Durable on how to become a power lineman. There is a video course there. It's really reasonable. It'll walk you through the steps if you're very interested in some sort of skilled labor that can make you upwards of 300K a year when you top out as a journeyman nationwide if you're willing to do the work. This is hard work. It's for men. Got to go early. Got to stay late. But if you don't know where to start out with and what search to go with, come and check it out on becomedurable.com. And, of course, check out my book, A Dominant Masculine Presence. Thank you, Nuke. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. All right, guys. So shuffle on over to um, uh, Thor's channel, Hud's channel, my channel, wherever you guys want to see it. Uh, check out the Dragon Ship. It's going to be a good show. We talk about deep masculinity uh, subjects, and it's always it's always good to have, uh, you know, hundreds of years of experience all in one place talking about life. So, yeah, mm -hmm. see you guys there soon. All right, uh, Jack. Okay, so uh, I've put the link to my Substack uh, in the chat if you want to go check that out. I was actually pretty proud of the uh, You Can't Control Anything post, especially like uh, you will find a lot of grammar errors, but please excuse me, English is my second language. But also uh, my channel is in the chat. We're going to do post zero tomorrow. Don't know if Nuke is going to be there. Depends on uh, <laughs> Depends on him. But normally we have Nuke, Chad of Arabia, Archwinger, Governor Megatron, Red Hawk, uh, and plenty of other guys. Dante the Panda, guys like that. Rule Zero Dad, come and join us and talk about uh, all kinds of topics that will and might be relevant to you. So please check that out tomorrow. That's it. All right. So guys, uh, wrap the show. Final thoughts for me is don't take, don't take it seriously. Um, don't let someone you don't know on the internet um, make you feel like you're not adequate you are adequate as long as you keep doing the things you have to do as a man and uh you know stay in shape be happy be healthy and all that stuff and realize that don't at the end of the day don't take seriously what the gods what rp4 made for fun <laughs> yeah <laughs> so just just relax you know women are gonna say mean things they're gonna have a camera you know women act differently in different places on a street interview they're gonna act a certain way the same girl will be a sweetheart at a coffee shop or a sweetheart at a family barbecue and then on a day with you, she may even like, you know, like, wow, this guy's, you know, pretty hot or something. So don't take it seriously. Learn some inner game, right? This ick list is a lack of inner game. And go forth and be happy and make sure that you always invoke rule zero, which is more sexual options and more power to you, the viewer, not to anyone else but yourself. So thank you guys for coming by. And uh, that's all I have. So peace. <laughs>